Welcome to the Dash Arts Podcast, Seeing the World Through an Artistic Lens. I'm Josephine Byrne, Artistic Director of Dash Arts, and I'm also Director of Our Public House, and that is why I'm sitting outside a really cold and quite wet pub in South London. So we've been enjoying a nice drink, sitting here with a... Actually, it's not, it's not my pint, it's somebody else's pint that I'm that not going to hold. <laughs> <laughs> at the end of a long day uh, in the rehearsal room at the National Theatre around the corner, where we have been exploring the beginnings of a new play. Okay, who wants another drink? Uh, maybe in a minute. Here, so what's your policy on oranges, Harold Wilson? <laughs> Three? Well, you said you had all the answers. What's your policy on easy peelers? <laughs> Are they just that simplest in disguise? <laughs> you get an easy peeler, ever, the attend dream. Yeah, we're focused on the big picture, actually. What's that then? If you want to ask questions, you can come So this is episode four on the making of Our Public House, which began back in May 2023 with um, our first workshop in Coventry and has sort of followed us through the last six months, meeting over 120 people um, and hearing what they have to say and supporting them in writing speeches. And you can go back and listen to the other episodes in this series uh, to hear a little bit more about our journey. Being told you're going to prison is the worst thing to be told. After the death of George Floyd, diversity's been trending. I'm otherwise known as DJ Can't Read. I'm still a human being. Rent control is not just about money in pockets, it's about securing safe housing and as a, as a right and giving local people the stability they need to make choices and flourish. Am I a terrorist? Eat less meat and more vegetables. To make choices and flourish. So I did a sort of literally, I sat there on the first day, I think the first thing we did was I handed um, each actor about eight speeches that, from the speeches that we, ha- we, we pulled together and, and said, like, these, there might be stuff in here that will help you understand your character better. And then they read them and they chose a couple and they shared a couple of the speeches and, and then we talked about why that speech felt so right for the person. So um, the speech, the people and the speeches are there in the room and they're being embodied by the characters and the characters are sort of forming around some of the things that drive the, those are the, the participants. Talk to me about the show set in a pub well I'm still learning about it uh, but it certainly involves lots of alcohol and some leeriness just like this one it is the perfect setting for me to ask you how your week is going tell me tell me some of the similarities in this pub that we're sitting at which will remain nameless but we are on the cut near the old Vic <laughs> tell me about some of the similarities uh, in this pub in wait, your pub I will I would say the biggest difference is that it, this one is rammed and actually in our pub um, that we've been exploring this week largely because I've only been allowed to work with six actors um, it's quite empty there's a we've been playing with this idea that it's um, pouring of rain which is pretty apt because we are hovering on wet seats outside the pub uh, but therefore what what was meant to be happening in the pub is sort of and not happened and it's a bit of a lock-in so that's the experience that we've been playing with this evening it helps me with the limitations of the cast uh, so it's a lot quieter uh, it is much quieter in your pub what's the name of your pub at the moment i don't know i mean i really don't know maybe the albion because it gets in a sense of in, of um of the things that we're exploring which includes englishness and what it means to be english today for the first time in the history of British politics, a community cast no votes at an election. So surely you have to listen to that. What does that say? Well, it's a rejection of this politics. Is it? Well, of course it is. It's not an act of self-harm. See, I think it's almost like a cry for help. A town opting out of the democratic process, saying we choose to become disenfranchised. I think that's people asking for something, that's not a rejection. If no one casting a single vote isn't a rejection of the process, 
Then what with the rejection? I'm just saying. Uh, we've got a phenomenal cast of, of, of performers who are really helping us learn bit learn about the show. I've kind of pat them off on on research to tell us a little bit about about things we're interested in. They have helped us inform uh, and understand the characters better. Like they've they, as they've learned about their characters, they have uh, told us about them and. Um, and then we've lent into that a little bit and lent into who they are so that the, the characters that are evolving are very, you know, are, are um, inspired by them, I imagine. I'm not going to say are them, but they are inspired by their lived experience. And um, and therefore, when Barney, who's, who's brilliant and and has been wonderfully writing quite a lot this week, um, he when he writes something and then we've got this opportunity to run through the script, the actors very instinctively sort of understand those characters because they've helped to build them. So it's a lovely, it's a really lovely synergy between the sort of writer and cast. And there's a great creative sort of um, uh, camaraderie in the room. Everyone's just up for it. And we've been playing a lot with how we bring in the speeches. I've been quite keen that we don't get so caught up in these fictional characters, that these are rooted in these amazing 120 plus people we've met and how we how we bring them into the room without without becoming them because obviously like we don't want to fictionalize real people so there or, or, or if we do it we do it with real love and care so we're just understanding it's been a week of of, of getting to know what the play is about and how we how and how we create magic and a play from this from this year long journey we've had with with participants around the country we have to sell up this is your inheritance though your heritage. Sorry. Well, isn't it? No. There's no way I'll ever run a pub, so don't inherit me this. I've got a flat in London, Mum. Well, you rent a room. Yeah, whatever. I don't intend to live in this town again. Oh. And heritage is that holiday in St Vincent we went on when I was nine. This is where you grew up. It's what I'll leave to you. Yeah, well, spoiler alert, but I will sell the shit out of this when you go. Schools in the city centre are closing because families can't afford to live in the city. They actually said to me, you shouldn't do this job. You shouldn't be working here. Again, maybe because I was deaf. I stand before you today as an everyday person. I am not a full-time activist. And here in England, I am not a political person. We're in a crisis. I mean, everything is just cards. <laughs> I would love to know the thought process that went through your head when you were like, we've got over 120 voices that we're bringing together to make this play. Let's add some more in and let's bring the actors to get involved as well. It feels like an incredible decision and so much information and so many experiences and opinions to hold. How have you been doing that and why? <laughs> why? Why didn't I just write, write for some of these 120? <laughs> I don't know, just because I like to make my life hard. <laughs> um, it's a beautiful decision that means that there are some performers in the pub behind us that are buying each other drinks, sharing packets of crisps, and having a really incredible week. So I can see a why from their perspective, but from a creative perspective, <laughs> from a pub perspective. Yeah, are the drinks on us? No, the drinks are on the Labour Party, aren't they, Isaac? We wrote into that, <laughs> wrote into the script. Um, um, so I guess I, I had, a, I've had a just bef so this is what we're in January, and in and in um, in December, Barney and I did a, like a wonderful day of brainstorming what this piece is about, and we went through. Our, it was a real day. We went on a big old journey, and we settled on a, a scenario. And we, uh, I can't remember. I think I, I think I'd already cast. I'd already worked out what actors we were going to have in the room. So I sort of we spoke. To, we kind of built a scenario based around the actors we had in that bizarre wonderful way that you can kind of reverse engineer something and so we we had these six ideas of characters and started to talk about who they were and sort of a little bit like you know this is a younger person this is somebody who's an outsider this is somebody who's been marginalized from a life experience this is someone is who who, who, who is deaf and functions in a hearing community this is somebody who runs a pub and um 
And then I sat there with all the speeches that we'd had and did a bit of matchmaking in my head and thought, well, I know, I know that person who we met in Sheffield and I know I can remember that time that they delivered that speech and the motivation for it and why they wrote that speech. But actually, if I were to sort of take some of those ideas and that sort of some of the thought process behind it and the words and not share the person with that, with my cast member or in that character, I think it might be a good fit. Do you remember your dreams? I don't know, sometimes. Why? Why, do you ever know what dreams mean? Well, I know about the ones with falling teeth, but everyone knows about that. I don't know any others. Yeah. Why'd you ask? Have you been dreaming? I don't want to hear about anything disgusting. <laughs> I saw my grandma. She visited me last night. She was sitting in here at a table. She didn't talk to me, but she was there. I think she was talking to someone. Uh-huh. I looked up what it means online. It said it was a good omen. Like, she came to me because I was feeling safe, like. Mm-hmm. But that didn't make sense, so I'm not certain. Well, why didn't it make sense? Because I don't feel very safe at the moment. OK. Why not, Joe? Oh, it's just stuff. You don't want to talk about it? No, it's just... It's bullshit. I'm all right. Of course, this week... Well, we get to the end of this week and we don't... It's not all fixed in stone. I think we'll lose quite a lot because we can't have everybody in the room. This will inform everything this week. We know there's a pub, we know there's six characters and we know it's informed by hundreds of voices from around the country. Yeah. And it's That's about enough. now. And it's about now. Like, you know, the, it, it, it's very much about now, where we are after 13 years of a government um, and facing an election and, and all of, you know, with the potential of a different government coming in and, and, and all of the possibilities that that might bring of change, of, 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 of new opportunities for people. Um, and, and that's what the speeches are all about. That sort of, the speeches are about um, wishes and dreams of a new world and a new what could be a new world or a new England. And, and I think that's what the play is about. Really, is what what we could be and how how we can change it. And um, and of course, really, like the like came out of the speeches is every single one of us has had the potential to be an activist. Um, and has an idea of what they'd like to change, and that's at the heart of the work. I said I weren't moving more than a mile, and if they offered me some flat a bus away, I'd rather live under the bridge by the station. Not tonight, obviously, because it's flooded, but it weren't when I told him that. You won't have to do that, Joe. Well, I'm not moving. Not far away, I mean, that's what I told him. Well done. Now they have their parameters. Yeah. They weren't very encouraging about it. No, but we'll, we'll see what happens. You and your mum okay, though? Yeah? Yeah. And then finally, uh, we will find a way to bring the actual speeches themselves. They will be in the show, but like un- expressed and understood as a sort of um, almost like an inner voice of some of the characters. That's the idea at the moment. We might lose that on the cutting room floor as the process evolves, but at the moment, actually, it's really beautiful to hear some of those speeches in full in the room. So that's also been a surprise. I wasn't expecting that. Food, heating, transport, toiletries, the internet, light. These things we would call essential to our own. Food, heating, transport, toiletries, the internet, light. These are the things we would call essential to our everyday life. Yet 90% of households receiving universal credit have gone without at least one of these in the past year. 90%. Inflation most acutely affects those from low income households as they'll spend the great. I want to thank the, the National Theatre's Generate programme and all their team whose wonderful support made this week's development possible. To our brilliant funders who've enabled the project's development, the Arts and Humanities Research Council, Arts Council England, the Three Monkeys Trust and our individual donors through the Big Give campaign. To our community partners and participants and academic partners, Alan and Henrietta, who were even able to join us in the rehearsal room this week. 
And finally, to writer Barney Norris and musician Nick Pinn, whose wonderful music you've heard in this episode, and all the actors who have so generously given so much of themselves to this script development work to help us understand the world we are building and what it can possibly be. Thank you. You must remember the 9-11. We did that. Perfect. We can make art. Education healthcare plans now. It connects us. Well, since then, all Muslims have been labelled as terrorists and dangerous. We changed that. We did that. We changed that. If you enjoyed the Dash Arts podcast, please go back and listen to more of them. You can find us on all your like favourite podcast platforms. And please subscribe and like and tell all your friends and write us a review because your support means the world to us. <laughs>